Can your periods cause sore nipples from a week before it comes? Is it okay to have sex during your periods? What's the best possible thing a guy can do for a girl in this situation? Namaste everyone, this is Avanti. I had promised a while ago that we would do weekly Q&As, but clearly not been doing a good job at doing that. Please let me know in the comments below what kinds of different topics you want. They can range pretty much anything. It can be questions about love and dating or education or periods or pretty much anything you want. For today's Q&A, y'all had submitted questions about periods. What should be the correct age to get your period? There is no real correct age to get your period. Often it's around 8 and 12, but for some people it can come earlier, some people can come later. Everybody's body is different and it really depends on your own body, your hormones, when you reach puberty. I got my period when I was 12. I have friends who got them much earlier, friends who got them much later. There's no real correct time, but you should be prepared with the knowledge regardless from a young age, in my opinion. When did you have your first period? Can you tell us the story? I got my first period, like I mentioned, when I was 12 years old. I remember I'd come home from school. I went to go to the bathroom, instead of pee. I also saw some brown stuff in my underwear. Fortunately, I knew what periods were, so I didn't freak out. I assumed that's what was happening but I didn't have things with me. The only person who was home at the time was my dad. So I went to my dad and I was like, hey, I think I got my period. He's like, cool. He pointed to the cupboard where my mom kept her pads and sanitary products. That was it. I think it took a while to get used to my period, to be honest, because it's not just the bleeding it comes with, it's so much more. And at this point, I've had periods for almost 14 years and I still have not fully gotten used to them. So it's just, what it is, I guess. Someone asked, what are periods? I'm a 13 year old boy and I often hear this from my mom and I wanna know about that. Um, I'm glad your mom is talking to you about periods. I feel like we should talk to, I think it's really important to talk to everybody about periods, whether they are a uterus owner or not. I was very intentional about talking to my brother about periods and I think that that should just be the baseline across the board. Let me explain periods very simply. When you go through puberty, there are a lot of hormonal changes in your body which prepare you to potentially, you know, in the case of somebody who has a uterus, um, bear a child in the future. And in the case of someone who has a penis, similarly generate sperm that could bear children in the future. It's just an evolutionary mechanism that exists in all our bodies. So when you start getting hormonal changes in females or uterus owners in particular, there are these hormones called estrogen and progesterone that start to be released by the ovaries. When that starts to happen, you will start to notice other changes in your body too. For example, breasts might start developing and swelling up, a lot of mood changes, you know, the typical puberty situations. But what starts to happen in your uterus is your lining starts to build up because these hormones stimulate your lining to build up. Why would your lining in your uterus build up? It's because it's preparing the body for the potential to host a child. Now on average, even for those folks who are trying to get pregnant, you don't get pregnant every month. And so what tends to happen is your lining builds up over the month in this cycle. And if an egg is not fertilized by a sperm, it starts to shed so that it can create a new lining the next month. Every single time, basically, an egg is released from the ovary, new lining is created for that process. Essentially, a period is when the lining of your uterus gets shedded it's usually a combination of blood, blood clots and clotting, and essentially this, this lining that's been, that's been created in your uterus over the duration of the month. Now there are four stages of a period, and you can remember it through the acronym MFAL, mothers, fathers, only lovers. M, or menstruation, is what we typically recognize as a period, which is when a person starts bleeding that usually lasts anywhere between three and seven days, depending on the person's body and changes and all the above. F is called a follicular phase. There is this hormone center in our body called the pituitary gland, which essentially controls a lot of the hormones, all different types in our body. And so during this phase, what it does is it sends a signal to the ovaries to start preparing follicles to potentially prepare an egg. This hormone is called FSH or follicular stimulating hormone. And essentially what starts to happen on the ovaries is these little like, sacs start to form. Um, and each of these sacs contains an immature egg. Typically only one of these eggs matures. And when that egg matures, it goes from the ovary through the fallopian tubes into the uterus. And that is the next stage, which is called ovulation. When this egg is released from its sac, it moves along through this pathway, through the fallopian tubes, toward the uterus, and essentially waits around for 36 to 48 hours in case sperm decides to meet it, fertilize, and become 
a zygote, embryo, all of biology terms, eventually a fetus, and potentially a child. If that does not happen, the lining decides to shed to create way for a new lining the following month, and the cycle repeats itself. As the lining starts to shed, you're back to the end cycle. You're back to the M phase, which is menstruation. What is PMS? Is it true that people are moody? So you might have heard of PMS. It stands for premenstrual syndrome. What it essentially means is during the last week of the luteal phase, which we talked about when this lining is being created, sometimes there's other changes that start to happen in the body. It can affect things like your mood or your emotions or your appetite. Your breasts can become really tender and swollen. You might have muscle aches, joint aches, back aches. And yeah, imagine if you're someone who doesn't have a uterus or a period, imagine going through that every month. It's, it's not fun. Not everybody gets PMS and sometimes, you know, if there's other environmental factors like higher stress or other hormonal factors, your body's going through something, the range can, you know, increase or decrease. But it's, it's something that, that tends to happen to a lot of people who have uterus. When should you use tampons? How the fuck is a tampon inserted? I wasted three and I still couldn't get it right. I totally understand. You know, there's so many different options. There's pads, there's tampons, there's menstrual cups. Um, and each of them have their own benefits. Menstrual cups, you know, are much more sustainable. Tampons, you know, especially for people who are active or if you're swimming or just in general, some people prefer them. I personally prefer pads. Um, that's just a personal choice, but it depends person to person. Tampons are sometimes hard to insert. So like with regard to when should you insert them? Usually when you're your heaviest flow, because if you're on super light flow, maybe toward the beginning or end of your period, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable, you know, putting something um, through your vagina. On the heaviest part of your period though, tampons can sometimes be a lifesaver because they will soak up most of the blood and in a way that otherwise you would end up using so many pads. How should you put it in? That's a great question. If you're sitting, say on a toilet, keep your legs or knees spread apart so that you have easy access to your vaginal hole. Hopefully I don't need to remind folks of this, but we have three holes. We have one hole, which is the opening to the urethra where we pee from, the second, which is the vagina, and the third, which is the anus where you poop from. So you will be putting it into the same hole that your vagina is, not where you pee from, not where you poop from. If you insert it straight, it's really gonna hurt because our vaginas are essentially tubes that elongate their, you know, they have musculature around them, all of that. And, and they're kind of situated like this in the uterus. So the best way to insert it is not straight or like straight up, but kind of at an angle as if you're inserting it toward the back where your butt is. So the best positions for that are, again, legs spread open, doing it on a toilet or putting one knee up, for example, putting it say on a ledge or a bathtub or something and using that space to insert. Again, it's not for everybody. Sometimes for some people, inserting tampons becomes tricky, especially if they've not done it before. So if you want to use tampons and, and insertion is a problem, I would suggest using water-based lubricant. Don't put anything else because that'll help insert. But that goes for anything that's penetrating your vagina. Lube in general is great for sexual activity. Um, it really helps that process. It's also great for insertion. You'll notice if you go to a gynecologist and do any kind of exam, they will put lube or that kind of jelly before inserting anything into your vagina to do a checkup. Similarly, the same process for a tampon if you want to try to insert that for the first time. Might just help ease the process or a sex toy or anything of, of that nature. Just lubricant. Is it okay to have sex during your periods? It's totally okay and safe too. Now, like with any other time, you might decide to have sex. It's important to be safe and protect yourself against infection, especially disease, sexually transmitted infection. So using a condom or some other kind of method is ideal. Um, for some people, I can understand that it might be interesting, but there's absolutely nothing unsafe about it. There's a lot of myths that if you have sex on your period, then you don't get pregnant. That's not necessarily true because if you remember the different phases of the period, it is possible for the egg to still be chilling around that time or, you know, the sperm's actually to, to live on for a couple days. And it's just, that's not a form of contraception. Earlier, I used to have a longer period, but when I took the pill, my period is very less. Makes sense, again, because when you take 
a pill, whether that's a pill that you take as birth control or, you know, a morning after pill, it usually has a large concentration of hormones, particularly estrogen. And the more estrogen you have, that usually means the less, you know, shedding you're going to have. Um, different forms of birth control lead to different outcomes. For example, for some folks when they have, like I used to have an IUD um, for a while and when you're on an IUD, depending on whether it's hormonal or not, your periods might be the same amount of time. You might, they might be longer, they might be shorter. When you're on more hormonal options, often it reduces the length of your period. Essentially, my, my seven day periods came down to three or four. So it really depends. It's, it's all based on the cycle. And again, none of these things should be ever considered without going to a doctor. Can your periods cause sore nipples from a week before it comes? And what's the cure for pad rashes? Yes, um, often for a lot of people, their breasts do swell up a week before their periods. If you go back to the section where we talked about the different stages of the period, this happens during the last week of the luteal phase, where essentially because your body is you know, going through a lot of preparations to make sure you start shedding all of this lining, um, the hormones are acting up in different ways and that can often lead to breast soreness. It can lead to also mood swings, many other things. So that's fairly normal. And if it feels abnormal from a previous time, just go get it checked out. In terms of the rashes, often you'll get rashes because of perhaps potentially if you've been wearing a pad for way too long or it's just really hot or if you're wearing a lot of synthetic clothing. So the general best practices are to make sure you wear cotton underwear, to make sure you change, you know, if you're having a pad or a tampon or whatever, you change it super frequently every few hours. And then if you do get a rash, make sure you're using something that is safe to use, whether that is, you know, lotion that's unscented or um, a sort of a cream that I would recommend you ask your doctor or a dermatologist what's best for your skin. What's the best possible thing a guy can do for a girl in this situation? Um, that's a sweet question. Firstly, a period is not a situation though. It's just something normal. The best thing that somebody can do who does not have a period to support someone who does is just be super understanding that it's it happens every month, but sometimes it sucks, sometimes it hurts more than others. You know, if, if somebody is dealing with pain, things that tend to help are a hot water bag or whatever it is that that person requires or asks of you, the best thing you can do is ask. Hey, how can I support you? What do you enjoy? The best thing you can do is ask. If you have someone who is in your life, whether it's your mom, your sister, partner, whomever, someone who has uterus in a period, just say, hey, how can I support you? Because some people, for example, like to have chocolate. Some people like to have warmth. Some people just want to be left alone. And whatever that is, best thing to do is ask because everyone has a different preference. Can we wash our hair on our periods? I have heard that people said we cannot, but I would like your opinion. You can absolutely wash your hair on your periods. You can wash anything on your periods. Again, a lot of these myths develop from either misinformation or something that was constructed a long time ago for whatever reason, but they don't have a basis in today's world with the access to everything we have, technology, just livelihood, um, lifestyle. So yeah, that was a little Q&A on periods. Thank you so much for sending in all these questions. Again, we're gonna try to do a different topic every week. So, and if you have any other questions about periods in general, let me know. Perhaps for the next one, I can bring on a gynecologist or somebody to explain and break down a lot of the medical questions that people might have. Uh, we can do a live, whatever it is. So yeah, let me know what else you want question and answers on. Let me know if this was helpful and I promise I'm going to be more regular with this. If you've watched all this point, please comment below chocolate. And I don't know who's watched actually till the end. But till then, please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of the jazz, you know the drill. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you soon next week. Oh